If you shoot with a Blackmagic camera and edit inside of Final Cut Pro, you know that it's been impossible to edit B-RAW footage natively inside of Final Cut until today. Color Finale just released a new software called Color Finale Transcoder, and it's a complete game changer for those of us that shoot Blackmagic RAW and want to edit it inside of Final Cut. Now I'm gonna show you exactly how this software works. So I already have a new library and project created in Final Cut. And then you see here in the upper left-hand corner, there's this new little button and that opens the transcoder. So we have this brand new window pane directly inside of Final Cut. And this is where we're gonna do all of our B-RAW editing. Now this also works for Cinema DNG and Aerie Log C, but for today, we're just gonna be focusing on B-RAW. So you need to locate on your computer where your B-RAW footage is saved. I just have mine on an external hard drive, but yours may be on an SD card or whatever it is. So just navigate to that over here on the left-hand side and then pull up the files that you want to edit and import into Final Cut. So I've got a couple clips here that I shot on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K when we were out shooting in the forest. And one of the things with B-RAW is that you can't just play it back smoothly. You can't just hit play anywhere and have it play back until it's transcoded or if you open it inside of DaVinci Resolve. So here, basically, you can just move the playhead along with your mouse, scrub along, and see what the clip looks like. Now they have a couple cool tools built into this so that if you don't need the entire clip and you know exactly what you need, you can actually drag this little in and out points here, these little arrows, and just choose the specific spot in the clip that you want to import. The nice thing about that is of course it's gonna save you space and make your editing even quicker because you know it's the exact spot that you want to use. And then in the upper right hand corner here, this is where we get all of the B-RAW adjustments. So the first thing is what kind of codec do I wanna import this in as? And for it to play back really smoothly, in Final Cut, you want it to be ProRes. So I'm actually gonna make mine ProRes 422LT light so that it just takes up a little bit more space for me, but obviously you can see all the other options that they have here. Then you can choose the resolution that it imports at. Because I shot this on the Pocket 6K, I can obviously choose 6K resolution and get that full resolution out of it. Or you can choose half, quarter, or an eighth. So if you already know that you're gonna be, you know, exporting this at only 1080p, you may wanna save some space and import time and do it at half resolution. But of course, that's up to you. I'm gonna choose full 6K for now. And then you need to choose the color space that you're importing this in as. And I'm going to choose Black Magic Design Film Gen 4 because that's what I shot it in. But obviously you have these other options here for HDR, Aerie log the different versions of um, black magic you know video extended and so on and you have highlight recovery i will check that on see if i get a little bit more detail in the trees back there so they're not too blown out you do have gamut compression i'm going to leave that off and then here we go here's our b-raw adjustment so my white balance i can see was shot at 5600 kelvin let's say that i wanted to warm that up just a little bit i can do that i'm going to bring it up to 6000 you have your white balance tint, which is adding green or magenta shift from anywhere from negative 50 to positive 50. I'm gonna reset that back to zero. I think it looks good. And then we have our ISO. So I shot this at a native ISO of 400, but you can adjust this down to 100 and all the way up to 1000. Now, if I had shot this at 3200 native ISO, I could have made even more adjustments all the way up to about 10,000 ISO. So that's awesome that it has all those same abilities that you get in DaVinci Resolve with B-RAW. But I'm gonna reset that back. And then you also have exposure adjustments. You can go anywhere from negative five to positive five. Again, I'm gonna set that back to normal. So I think that this looks good right here. And because I shot everything here in nearly the same lighting conditions, I can actually copy and paste these settings onto another clip. So I hit copy, select another clip here, and I'm gonna find the spot in this clip that I actually want to import. And I'll set an in point and an out point because I don't need the whole clip. That's what I want. And then I'm going to paste those settings on. And I can see that it's already put them exactly the same as the previous clip. So it makes it really quick and easy. I could paste them onto all of the clips here. But for this example, I'm just doing these two. Now I want to import those. So I'm gonna select the first one, hold shift and select the next one. And in the lower right corner here, you can see how much space is available on the hard drive where you're importing it, which is 360 gigabytes. And then the estimated file size of those clips. So it's one and a half gigabytes. So I definitely have enough space. I'm gonna hit import. And then it wants to know where you're gonna put these. So it's gonna put them directly into your Final Cut library. I'm gonna choose the library that I'm working inside of and hit choose. Now, depending on how many video clips you select, their length and the resolution, import time is obviously going to vary. I selected a few shorter clips, so it shouldn't take very long. And I'm actually going to close out of this window now. And you can see that it gives you this big red thumbnail showing that something's happening, that it's importing. And it says, you know, downloading remote media. And that can be a little bit confusing to some people, but 
This doesn't use any internet connection. You don't need Wi-Fi or anything to do this. It's just downloading the footage in from the Color Finale transcoder. I have previously made on this channel a video of how to import B-RAW into DaVinci Resolve and then transcode and export it as ProRes to then be imported into Final Cut so you could work with it. But it is such a headache. It has so many steps and it just takes so much time to render and export that. So this gets rid of that entire process. It's not necessary anymore. This is just absolutely amazing and is going to completely speed up my workflow. Because before, a lot of times I just didn't shoot in B-RAW because it was such a headache to work with because I edit in Final Cut. So I'd end up shooting a lot of times just in ProRes so it could right away start editing it. But now I feel comfortable shooting everything in B-RAW, taking full advantage of B-RAW, but still editing in Final Cut because I can just right away transcode it into ProRes, but make those adjustments in my B-RAW footage before I actually import it. All right, now that the footage has imported, I can simply drag and drop it right into my timeline and it should play back right away completely smooth because it's filmed in ProRes. And I shot this at 50 frames per second, so I can actually slow it down, which I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna go to automatic speed, and there we go. Now I'm getting my nice slow-mo footage that I recorded, and it looks great, but I need to do some color grading to it. So I can, of course, drop a LUT right onto it. So in the lower right here, I'm going to drop a custom LUT on, and I'm using the buttery LUTs, which are made specifically for the Pocket 6K here, and I'll throw that on. And I think that's a good starting spot, but let's say that I want to do even more color grading to it, or I think, oh, you know, I want to do some more adjustments to that B-RAW footage. Well, you could actually go open the transcoder again and adjust those settings, you know, adjust the exposure, the color, whatever it is, again, and then re-import that clip if you wanted to. But I think that's really an unnecessary step. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm actually going to put color finale onto this. So I'm gonna drop that right onto the clip and it's gonna give me some adjustments to this footage that actually behave a lot like B-Rod does. So on the right hand side here in the inspector, you can see Color Finale Pro and I can do some adjustments to the exposure. So if I wanna bring it down a little bit, I can do that. And then I can add in some nice contrast with this slider. And I love this because nowhere else in Final Cut is there a contrast slider. And I think it's just really necessary. It makes it so much easier to make your you know, flat images really pop really quickly. I can go in and I can adjust my white balance, the temperature right here with the slider. So if I made it just a little bit too warm when I imported it, I could definitely go in and cool that back down a bit. You can see how this feels a lot like those same raw sliders and everything like that, but this is all Color Finale Pro after the fact adjusting this footage here. I just wanted to show you that even after you get the footage in, yeah, a lot of people might say, oh, well, you can't edit the B-RAW footage anymore. It's now transcoded as ProRes. Well, you are correct there. You would have to go back into the transcoder and edit that original file if you wanted to make adjustments and then re-import it. And that's not a huge deal. But even still, you can drop something like Color Finale Pro on it and make all these other adjustments to it again. And it really feels like you're still working with B-RAW footage. All right, so here we go. I've just pulled up a project where I shot everything again on the Pocket 6K and B-RAW, but it was all shot anamorphic with the Atlas anamorphic lenses. So it has a two times squeeze to it. That's why it looks all square here. But in the upper left-hand corner here, you can simply check the anamorphic box and boom, it does the de-squeezing for you right here inside of the transcoder. And of course I can you know, move the playhead along and see what this footage looks like and find a spot that I want to import specifically. Yeah, that looks good. And then in the upper right hand, again, I'm gonna choose ProRes Lite. And then I'm gonna import this at its full resolution, 3700, which is its anamorphic. And I'm gonna change it to Blackmagic Design Film Gen 4. And there we go. The image is already looking much better. It's not so blown out with that Gen 4. I'm gonna check on Highlight Recovery. And I can actually see in the window that a little bit of detail does come back when I check that off, just a tiny bit. So I'll keep that on. The white balance to me looks good. Um, it looks like I actually shot this with a tint on, which I didn't want. So I'm gonna set that to zero and I can just type that in, hit enter, to get rid of that tint. My ISO was 800 and I'm actually going to pull that back a little bit because I think it just looks a little overexposed. I'm gonna bring it down to 500 ISO and everything else looks good. So now I'm gonna hit import selected clip and it's going to begin the transcoding process once I again select the library that I'm working in. All right, now that the anamorphic footage is imported, I'm gonna drag it onto the timeline and this should play back pretty smoothly already. 
All right, and it is, it looks great. It's all de-squeezed and it's ready to be color graded and everything like that, so it's awesome. Now, if you don't use Color Finale Pro to do your color grading, that's okay. You can, of course, pull up the color board or color wheels and do your color corrections to this footage right here. So I'm just going to do just a really quick adjustment here. And this looks great. This is a really good starting spot to get anamorphic B-Raw footage directly into Final Cut, de-squeezed, and playing back in the timeline smoothly. So I absolutely love this. It's a complete game changer for me and is gonna make my B-Raw workflow so much faster and so much more painless. And you can import as much footage as you want, you know, a few clips at a time, or you can import all of the footage at the same time. It's totally up to you and what you wanna do, but just be aware that the more clips that you import, the higher resolution and the longer length, of course, it's gonna take longer. So if you know you have a really big batch that you need to import and have transcoded into ProRes from B-Raw, you may wanna set that to do that, you know, before you go to bed or before you go off to go do a shoot or work or whatever it is, because it may take a bit for it to all get imported. Now for me, I'm working on an old 2013 iMac with an Intel i5 core processor and 32 gigabytes of RAM. So it's actually a much slower and older computer. So for me, it takes a little bit longer for them to import. But if you're working with a newer computer like the M1 processor, it's definitely gonna work a lot quicker. At the time of release, the software costs $59, which I definitely think is worth it for anyone that shoots in Blackmagic RAW and wants to edit inside of Final Cut. It is such a huge time saver and just so convenient to use. So if you're interested, definitely check out the link in the description below, and you'll also help support the channel if you end up picking it up. And guys, if you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe right now because I have a ton more videos coming out on shooting, editing, lighting, gear reviews, everything like that, and you don't want to miss it. All right, I'll see you in the next video.